How's it going guys? Matt here with Code Tech and Tutorials. We're going to show you how to make hike map terrain uh, with Blender and GIMP today. So all free programs, all free stuff. Um, this is just kind of my method that I've learned. So take it with whatever grain of salt you need to take it with. Don't expect me to be an expert. I'm not an expert at Blender or uh, GIMP. I'm a C++ programmer, but as many of you know, I'm making a game. So I'm often toying around with this kind of stuff too. If we want to make height map terrain, first we need some sort of height map, and we're just going to do a black and white height map. You can often download these online, off websites, or you can make your own. But in general, we want to use black and white, and we mean we want the darkest color to be low terrain and the brightest, whitest color to be high terrain. So with that in mind, we can make gradients that essentially operate uh, like mountains and rivers and lakes and stuff like that. All right, so let's get started. Let's just make a new image. I pressed Control N here on GIMP. So obviously you're gonna need GIMP and Blender. I'm expecting you know how to do that. So image size. You can kind of do whatever you want here depending on what resolution you want. I'm just gonna do 512 by 512, a nice even square. And I'm starting out with this. I have these colors set over here, but uh, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna, we're gonna do some blending and pull some tricks to mess around with this. So I'm just gonna kind of show you that this being all gray right now, um, it's not the brightest it could be. It's not the, it's not the darkest it could be. So this is gonna be just a mid-level. But let's say, you know, we got, a, we got this all selected. Let's do Control A, Control A to select all here. And let's just go to filters and let's, uh, let's do something interesting here. There's quite a few different ways we could kind of do this. I like to just make some kind of, uh, some kind of noise pattern to start. You can really kind of mess around and just get you something that you might like. Under render, there are a few things like fractals, noise, um, patterns. So you can just pick something there. Like let's go with some Perlin noise and check out what we get here. We get kind of this, uh, I would say almost denim looking pattern, which is probably fine to start. You know, it's going to give us some variety, but we've got some options here and we can kind of adjust those as, as we think, like maybe something like that. That's going to give us some, some low zones with the darks. Um, we can change the scale here, but really you, you basically just kind of want to mess around with this. It isn't going to necessarily matter a whole lot. Okay. So that looks maybe like a fine start. And then we're just going to go to filters, do a Gaussian blur. We're going to go to, I don't know, let's do some other stuff. Maybe let's mess around. No, you can always hit cancel if you don't, don't like the option you chose. I like to do cartoon modifier here under artistic. It basically just makes the blacks and whites more pronounced. Sometimes that's a cool thing to do last. Okay, here we're getting something kind of cool. You can see that this might be like a terrain with a bunch of lakes and maybe a swampy type area. Um, so this might be a good base. So this is really just for base terrain, obviously. So it's not going to place trees or shrubbery or whatever. It's just a height map, height map only. Okay, so maybe let's go with this. That looks kind of cool. A lot of low zones, um, some high zones, and then we could do some other interesting stuff here. Like maybe we could put a light on it and we'll choose sparkle, I guess. <laughs> and uh, let's see how this is looking. Can't even really see. But basically if you put like a super light point somewhere, it's gonna make a high zone. And well, you're probably getting the point here. It's all looking kind of random. Um, and you can really do this however you want. <laughs> That's weird. Imagine if we height map that. All right, this fractal trace. Um, maybe it, maybe that's what you want. I don't know. It's kind of up to you. You see these a lot. You can like to, sometimes you can download height maps for like different areas in the world that Google has. All right, but anyway, once you get something you like here, I don't want to go too far into this. I can mess with this forever. I'll show you a couple I generated earlier, just by kind of playing around. But uh, at some point, you want to go to colors and just go to. I guess you could go to I think brightness contrast. I think here. Uh, yeah, you can mess with that if you want, but there's one specific one I was looking for. I think it's hue saturation. We just want to take the saturation all the way down, and that will just take all the color out. So if you've accidentally got some various colors in here, you can just use this saturation and just take it all out. Obviously, it's not changing this much because I already started with black and white, so there's not much to change. But if there were like reds and blues and stuff in there, it would take those out. 
Alright, so it's looking alright. Maybe I'll hit a few more filters, maybe do another Gaussian blur or two. Sometimes this kind of helps uh, make it basically kind of smoother terrain in the long run. Just a little bit of blur in there. Uh, something like that. And the last thing I'm, I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to just go to this exposure under colors and just kind of overexpose it a little bit just to make the blacks more pronounced. Um, yeah, and you can kind of play around with this. Uh, this isn't my favorite height map I've ever made. It's very random and it's going to be very messy, but it's going to get the point across as a good demo one. All right, and what I like to do here is, I don't know, say you want this swamp to be an island. So you can grab one of your brushes here. Let's go to airbrush. Change this to pitch black and just put some black around the edges. I'm going to turn up this hardness. If you click somewhere and hold shift, you can uh, do it in mass. But you can basically make some low areas by just darkening them up. This doesn't seem to be going as dark as I like, so maybe we'll go to, instead of airbrush, we'll go to uh, paintbrush. This should make it a little darker. And I'm just going to kind of surround it by this dark area, just as a low area. You could also, if you want it to be surrounded by mountains or something, you can put a light area. But that's going to basically, in my case, for what I'm thinking, the low areas are going to be water. You could think hey, it's going to be like a little island surrounded by water. And if you want to round it out a little bit, you can, you know, do some stuff like this. And you can, uh, you can make some rivers this way. Say you just went like a river kind of going through like this. Maybe another one from over here crosses through you know something like that and then you could maybe consider uh, doing more stuff if you want but personally this is this is looking a little cray cray in my opinion there's just so many dark splotches so maybe we can maybe we can do a, a few more light areas just uh, so we'll go to a kind of a grayish color on the white side here and uh, change this let's go back to let's go back to airbrush and uh, just kind of lighten these up a little bit. Uh, just like so. Just Bob Ross it, you know? Just kind of make some higher terrain here is the thought process. Now once again, I'm all I'm basically just kind of randomly doing stuff here. So use your creativity. I'm not like a master at all this, but you can kind of see we're getting something here. Now, once again, we want to filter it down a little bit. Let's go back to the exposure and uh, mess with these levels a bit and uh, yeah we can kind of keep touching these levels until we get something that we think is gonna work for us once again I'm gonna pull out the saturation in case I got some yellows in there or anything and you can kind of see by the mini picture what it's gonna look like if you sort of zoom out you kind of get an overview looks something like a maybe like you'd see in a black and white map right that's kind of what you want in my opinion anyway so I'm just going to do a few more things. I think I'm going to hit this Gaussian blur one more time after adding these peak zones of light. And there we go. That doesn't look too bad. So close enough. All right, we, we got a height map to work with. So now we're just going to go to File, Export, um, and save it as something you're going to remember. So I'm going to just put in my created images and save it as like uh, height map three. I already made a one and two. All right, so, general, so basically step one, get a height map. That's really all this point is and this is just one way you could do it with GIMP is by playing around with this kind of stuff so I'll show you a couple height maps I made previously so I've got this height map I made earlier and I've got uh, so I've got this one I kind of made too which you see has some somewhat mountainous ranges and here's our new one that I just made all right so we got some height maps to play around with now in blender so once you've got a height map, you can open up Blender. Uh, let's let's get rid of this camera. Let's get rid of this light. You can just click on them, hit delete. Uh, that's, that was just the default. This is how it starts out if you haven't changed anything. And let's get rid of this cube. So now what we want to do is just add a plane. And you can do that when you're in object mode here by pressing Shift A. And Shift A, go to plane. And now we want to scale this up to a terrain size because this is really tiny. And you know, if we're thinking terrain, for example, we want it to be kind of big. So just hit S and just scale it up. Uh, I'm going to scale it by like 500. So I'm hit 500, zero, zero, enter. And now another thing about Blender is when you scale, it doesn't lock in the transformation. It just has a scale applied to the, the one by one. So what you got to do is hit, I think it's control A 
and then and this is an apply operation control a all transformations now you can see the scales one and it actually resizes this entire thing the rent it goes out of render distance there a bit because it's huge uh, you might be able to change that in blender settings but uh, not a huge deal all right so now we want to apply our height map to this plane is what we do next here so we're going to go over here to the right side you got to make sure you have your plane selected and then you go to this wrench tool the modifiers properties all right so you click on that you click on add modifier and we're going to look for under deform a displace click on displace and we got some options here we got a direction and we want our direction to be z because uh, that's going to be blender's height you know it's the up and down on blender by default uh, you might have it different like if you use for example opengl the up and down is the y but in blender here it's z by default all right space we got local we got a strength we got a mid-range we can play around with those later but for now we're going to just leave them so now we've got a displace so now this is kind of interesting you have to actually click on displace by default it's already clicked on but if you add more modifiers for example let's add some other random thing you can you'll notice that you can click between i'll x that out so just keep that in mind going forward because that's where people tend to get stuck is they have the wrong one selected and the right options aren't showing. So when you have this displace clicked here, uh, you can, and you can tell by the blue outline around it, little blue outline. It might be hard to see on the video, but you'll know. Now what you want to do is you want to go down here to uh, material properties. You click on that, you click new, and you get a material. No. I'm sorry, I'm slightly mistaken. We don't want to go to material yet. We can, we'll use that a little later. We want to go to texture properties. It should be the next one down. Looks like a checkerboard. And you'll see it has displace selected here. And we're going to plus and say new. And it brings up this. Now, we got image or movie by default. There's other options here, but we're just going to leave it image or movie. And then down here with the image, we're going to go to open. And here's where we want to navigate through the height map we created. So just go to where you saved it. And there's a little search up here if you need it, height map. We're gonna pick height map three. That's gonna bring it in. You'll see it on the right side. Nothing looks applied yet, that's normal. It's under displace. Let's go back up here to displace. Uh, coordinates. Coordinates, we wanna change this to UV. So it's kind of hard to see here because there's really no lighting. So what we're gonna do here is just add a sun. We're gonna once again, make sure you're in object mode, hit control A and look for light just put a sun in there and this sun we can change its direction a little bit we also want to press z and go to rendered that way we'll be able to see shadows and you can click this little sun move it around a little bit and this should basically allow you to see your your bumps in your actual height map a little better with some shadowing so you can tell what's going on a little better and we're going to go to our sun while you have the sun selected go to the properties of it here and you could play around with its strength and its color. I'm gonna turn it just a little bit yellow. All right, very good. As you can see, it's pretty hard to, to make note of anything going on here so far. So maybe we'll change this back to Z, see how that looks. We see something shifted there when we change. Uh, I can see that a little bit. So it's definitely working. It just doesn't quite look right. All right, now you, you may have already figured this out, but basically this plane we're working with here, it's only got four vertices it's got the four corners <laughs> that's that's all it has right now so that's it's only going to allow shifts based on the vertices so what you need to do is subdivide it a bunch so we want to go into edit mode you can press tab to go into edit mode or you can just switch it up here and then right click and click subdivide and subdivide down here you get a little option and you can do number of cuts so we're going to take this number of cuts up to like i don't know let's do 256 that's a lot of cuts and you see we get all these little dots now we can actually height map because it's going to adjust these vertices to height map when we only had four vertices the four corners obviously it couldn't do a whole lot with height map it was just not enough detail Okay, so now with this 256 subdivides, we can go back to object mode and immediately we can see the height map is being applied to some extent. And it doesn't look too bad already, so we can we'll adjust our sun maybe a little bit. We just want to be able to, I just like having the sun in here so you can see the shadows. You don't actually need the sun. Make sure you're in rendered mode if you don't see this. If you have this in solid, it's going to look like this, which, you know, this is a fine way to work too. Maybe it's better for you, uh, but totally up to you. I just like seeing it rendered. All right, so now we can 
make sure we got our plane selected, go back to some modifiers and play with the strength and you can see its actual operation here. Um, there's a negative 100. So when it's negative, it takes all of the light zones and puts them low. So really you can make it either way. You can make the light sink or you can make the light be mountainous higher region. I, I like the dark to be the low regions. Personally, I just think it works better. So let's go back here and let's make this positive. And that should operate more as we expect. And there we go. We got some, some high regions uh, where it's lighter. And at this point, I would love to increase this render distance a little bit. I'm not sure where you do that. And uh, I'm not going to look it up mid-video, but it's probably somewhere in preferences and viewport. Uh, but I'm not seeing it. So if you know off the top of your head, just leave a comment. Uh, but you can see we're kind of getting some things done here. All right, so what else do we want to do? Well, we could go, you can right click here and go to shade smooth, kind of get a nicer looking terrain like so. You can see that there's like some blotchiness and we don't necessarily want that because these were intended to be rivers, but it's just the way it came out. So uh, different height maps, you're going to get different, different observations, um, but it's kind of doing what we expect. It is a very blotchy image, so not too surprised that it looks like this. If you have like clean dark lines, you'll get smoother looking uh, rivers, for example. So let me just let me just choose a different height map here and let's take a look at what happens. So I'm gonna choose this one, height map two, and you can see that uh, it kind of works here. You can see the mountainous regions, you can see the low regions. This isn't the best detail of a height map either, but with playing around with these levels, you should be able to get the kind of pronounced that you want. So there's definitely a bit of a uh, a bit of a learning curve, we'll say, or a bit of a best practices you'll have to figure out uh, here as far as height maps go. Uh, this is one I did earlier as well that has kind of more pronounced rivers and it's just cleaner looking in general. As you could kind of tell when it was very messy looking, it shows in the height map. And this one you can see it's got the low edges here with this dark border. That's what we intended. All right, so. Uh, I'm going to go back to the one I was messing with before and eh, we can we can add some more modifiers. So another thing we can do is just go back to modifiers and add another modifier called decimate. Where's decimate? There it is. Decimate under generate. And this is going to give us some more options. I'm going to leave it collapse and we can play around with this ratio. This is basically the lower this is, the more it's going to kind of smooth things out a little bit by just decimating the geometry. So you can kind of play around with that a little bit as well. And you can just kind of see what works for you. you click all these options and play around. You can get an angle limit here with planner. So you can really kind of modify its end result to get what you want here. Uh, let's, I'm gonna stick with that 0.5. I'm gonna stick with a collapse and then right click shade smooth. Um, doesn't look the greatest. This looks pretty messy for a geometry, but that's okay. And you can uh, also go to textures here eventually and add a texture to it, add a material and set it how you want. I'm going to give it maybe just a little, little brown or something, a little orangish. I don't know, maybe a little greenish. I don't know. You decide you can bring in, you know, you can go to a material workflow on this if you will. And uh, yeah, that kind of gets into a whole new area, but you can go into shading, for example, zoom way out here and you can start messing with nodes and you can do special stuff like make maybe low areas look a certain way or steep areas look a certain way so you can kind of get that rocky texture going here if you get fancy with that uh, and get fancy with these nodes I'm not a node expert so I'm not gonna try to go into that right now I'm just keeping it really simple so let's go back into layout just switch no nope, not delete switch this to rendered and you can kind of see what it might look like as a final result obviously we got the lighting being influenced by the sun so your results may vary at this point if you want to use this you can just go to file export and export it as whatever you want i'm going to do a little obj here and uh, just save it somewhere i'm just going to call this uh demo terrain for example and then you can load this up in your favorite game engine for me, I have this, uh, you know, I'm always working on graphics, as most of you probably know. I'm going to open up my Archer engine here, which is my little game engine that's perpetually in progress. 
and uh, I got a startup item here. Oh no, it's gonna it's gonna build libraries. Okay, I'm gonna let it do that real quick. But just for sake of example, you could you could load up Unity, Unreal, Godot, you, you name it, anywhere where you can bring in a model, you should be able to bring in this and uh, kind of make your final adjustments. So I'm just gonna launch my little editor example thing here in my project. This is on GitHub for free if you want to toy with it. Always welcome to. It's always always welcome to improvements and pull requests and all that stuff. I don't actually have much time to work on it anymore. Oh, looks like I have a breakpoint accidentally. Alright, so I get my little editor up here. It's just a blank screen. Um, this is just a sample editor. I'm going to go ahead to import model and we're just going to look at my demo terrain here that I saved. There it is. Demo terrain. Bring it in. Oh, I've got more breakpoints. I guess I last time I was working on this I was debugging some. Alright, but there we are. Terrain has loaded in just as I height mapped it. That's really the point I wanted to show you is that you can load it in to your software from there as you want. I'll show you a couple ways, a couple other cool things maybe, but hopefully you get the point of this workflow. Making height maps or downloading them however you want to get a height map and then just basically getting a plane in there, subdivide it, uh, bring in a displacement modifier, and then go to your material and bring in the texture that you want and uh, you know basically playing around with these settings you want to set it to UV direction to Z you know play around with these as desired obviously that was a bit bumpy like something like this might be better to load in but other one was just too bumpy and then uh, decimate to mess with stuff shade smooth to, to kind of mess with it more and you can get fancier from there if you want and of course I also just added a texture for this greenish color or a material rather so you can get fancy with that if you're good at that with the, with the whole shading workflow and all that stuff where do you go from here what other stuff can you do well if you just do a Google search for like generating height maps or height map generators for example you'll find all kinds of stuff you'll find that you know lots of people have made these kind of uh, height mappers in some games just allow you to bring them into you bring in a height map for city skylines for example it's just gonna it's gonna work there's there's a lot of tools that kind of help with this too but you can just do it manually you can also write your own i think learn opengl has some tessellation stuff so this um tutorial here and learn opengl you know there's a lot of stuff to go through but they've got some uh kind of ideas on how to render terrain dynamically as well um, so if you really want to do it through pure code this might be a decent place to start uh, as you can see they've got some output results and if you put it in OpenGL in wireframe mode you'll see it like that so you know I just want to yeah you know, kind of as a final thing say blender's not the only option you can manually code this up because essentially it just places vertices uh, based on your preferences and all that cool stuff so hopefully this helped you understand height maps a little bit and maybe get started with them or something and uh yeah that's all i got i'll see you in the next video peace out guys